How about this surprising story? Tez Walker can play now. He can play. The NCAA did an about face on its prior ruling that made him ineligible. It's a story we thought was over, but it was actually in a secret overtime because this game makes no sense. Let's go slightly in depth. So, Walker, just to remind you, is the UNC wide receiver who became preseason drama when the NCAA benched him for transferring too many times to a bunch of different schools, even though we should say the rule that they applied was approved after his transfers. And one of the transfers was from a school where he never even played a single game of football because of COVID. The details were very confusing, and they riled people up, me included. Head coach Mac Brown chastised the NCAA for being inconsistent and out of touch. The university started considering legal action. UNC fans were furious and they were worried about their season. My mom, who doesn't really care about college football, said, oh, honey, I forgot UNC is by you. Is it nice there? And Attorney General Josh Stein was like, I'm the real hero. Stein tweeted today, breaking, Tez Walker can play. I wrote the NCAA last week to demand that it reconsider its unfair decision. I am gratified that it has listened, and I wish this young man nothing but the best. Josh, they added more characters to tweets now. You could have literally just added, P.S., I'm running for governor. Surprisingly, the NCAA didn't mention Stein's persuasion in its statement, but instead fired a few shots across the bow, saying this is all UNC's fault, that they didn't provide the correct documents, quote, despite the school's multiple chances to do so. I love this passive aggressive line the best. It is unfortunate that UNC failed to provide this important information previously. Ah, yes, the important information, of course. We have to have the important information. You can't possibly go on without the important information, which they never elaborate on at all. No details. Instead, they just go directly back to scolding UNC for being upset about the initial ruling. It reads like a, a script from the Crown. Had the UNC staff not behaved in this fashion and submitted this information weeks ago, this entire unfortunate episode, would have been avoided. What information? What do you have? Can we know? Why didn't you mention this before when everybody was blaming you? Why didn't you say, well, we're just waiting on some documents? UNC's athletic director called them out for this too, saying the justification provided by the NCAA today is not accurate. Oh well, who cares, I guess? It's only the crux of the entire story. It doesn't matter. He can play now. So let's just move on to the next episode, which is this weekend. Tez Walker will be back on the field at home against Syracuse, where this drama will be a perfect storyline, hopefully punctuated by lots of touchdowns and dollar bills. After all, anything otherwise would be most unfortunate. If you have things on your mind, let me know. Give me your opinions, your critiques. Tell me the stories you think the local news should be discussing. Obviously, we talk a little bit differently during this segment about some of these news stories. Email me at dan at wrl.com, and we will go in-depth.